Okay. Uh, before this class, or maybe previously, have you learned about polymer something before? Maybe organic or polymer chemistry? Oh, sorry. polymer physics? No? Learn? Learn? Okay. Have you learned? But at least chemistry, all of you learn, right? Chemistry. As a basic level. Okay. So, um, I think we can. Okay, so my name is. You know my name is Iman Purnama. I also graduated before uh, in NPUSD for Master and PhD in Material Science. Um, yeah, I think that's all. And I, I, I think. So, all of you take my calculus class before? Most of you, right? Most of you take my calculus class. Okay, so, um, because this is actually my new course for this semester. So, I hope I can adjust the calculus with the new one. Okay, so, you, have, you can have more. Uh, discussion in the future. And I think because we only have uh, 10 students, right? 10 students. So all students for this class, I think only 10. So I need to know how we can proceed in the, uh, in the future, okay? aside from class. So of course, this is the uh, our classroom, our schedule. So schedule is Monday evening night and then Thursday early morning. Okay. And uh, if you want to contact me through email, I prefer this email. It is faster. Or if you want chat through Moodle, also okay. I think it's also okay. Chat through Moodle. My office in 913 is the the building next next building, yeah. Uh, okay. So I would I would like to talk about this this course. So this is an introductory course to polymer. So we are going to 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 talk a lot on polymers, but because the polymer is really the content is a lot. Okay. Content is a lot, and this is just introduction. Just introduction. So I would like to cover most of all, but not really detailed. Not really detailed. So the detail part will be in other course. In other course. So this will be the introductory course. So what you need is uh, all. We, what we're talking is the chemistry property, physical property on polymers. And we, I will talk a little bit about syllabus, what we will cover in, in our course uh, for this semester. And actually, a prerequisite like what knowledge you, you need to have in this course is actually none. So everyone is welcome, if, even if you are not really familiar with polymers, is welcome to take this course. We are going to talk from very, very uh, basic, okay, the very, very basic concept of polymers. And then, okay, this is uh, my, my, my score system, okay, my evaluation system. So we will have a midterm, okay, uh, around 20%. We will have a final exam, 30%. So it's, this two is already 50. The other 50 will be on your attendance, activity, and project. So project is like a homework, but it's more like um, Homework usually you answer questions, right? You have a question, answer one by one. A project is like you need to make to, to offer some topics and you need to uh, wrote like you can wrote an article, something like that. But I haven't really decided what type of project we can we can do within this class. So this will be individual projects, individual projects. Okay. Um, and 
the midterm and final is supposed to be the same within the uh, the weeks on the calendar academy. So I think the midterm around April, uh, final is I think last of May or early June, early month of June for the final exam. And attendance, okay, attendance, uh, activity, activity is uh, when you are answering some problems or maybe you are able to discuss more in class or asking questions, that's also considered as activity. Okay, okay then that, uh, and then perfect. Uh, references. The textbook is the first one. It's the introduction to polymers. Robert Robert D. D. Young and Peter Lovell. This is the textbook. The reference is the other three here. So there are some about polymers, polymer chemistry and physics, polymer science technology. And also, I, if you are, if you have taken course material science engineering, I will sort of take some reference from that as well. Uh, even though we have a lot, a lot of reference, most of the topics in our course is I'm taking all the general topics from all these uh, reference about polymers. Yeah, about polymers. Okay. Okay, so just an introduction, brief, really, really brief. Polymers, we can this this uh, separate this poly and mers or polymeros from Greek, which means poly is many and meros is uh, parts. So it actually literally means many parts. So it is from Greeks. So what, what is polymers? What is polymers? I think some of you already know from chemistry, but anyone want to answer? Just admit any any answer. And don't be don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Or actually if you feel like your English is not good, it's okay, it's okay. You can just speak. I, I know all young Taiwanese, they understand English. They need to have more confidence in speaking. So don't, don't be afraid. If your pronunciation is wrong, if your grammar is wrong, that's okay. That's okay. Everyone can ask. Yeah, anyone, anyone. Just make 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 some any any comments. <laughs> or you can do <laughs> Because we have our own. Use 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 thumb, this this index finger and you use it. But the same rule, the same rule. The same rule, like the thing is hand game. Uh, any, any comments about polymers? Repetitive 
Okay, it almost answered everything in what my question is. So polymers, they also, it's also good keywords. Plastic also good keywords. If you maybe live in, today is 2023, right? So if we live around maybe 1920s or 1930s, if you say word polymers to the people, they will feel, what is that? It's not really common. It's not really popular. Even they, they don't have that word yet, the polymers. But rubber or like plastic, they already know. They already know, like, uh, like, um, see, like a rubber stretch. They already use it, but they they don't know that it is a polymer. The word is not yet found. The word polymer. The word polymer is around 1950, 60. It's 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 mostly found in on those times. So it's, it's if we think like a new science, it's it's, it's actually new development. Newly developed, the polymer itself, the word polymer. But actually, polymers is. Let me click this. Okay, polymers are everywhere. Polymers are everywhere. If you see this room, how many polymers you can find? I also don't know. So I just assume uh, this. What else? Maybe from your your own uh, your back leather and maybe some I, I believe some plastic needs need to have in your in your uh, because because plastics or polymers we can easily manage manufacture easily we can fact manufacture a lot with with a cheap cost that's polymer easy to, to fabricate. Oh, what else? I think this, right? Polymers. What uh, else? I believe mostly in more uh, like if the design is really uh, really complex, probably there's polymer, right? That is polymer. So polymers everywhere. And I think you can also say, I have polymer, right? You agree with that? Agree, right? DNA, your uh, protein, peptide, it's all polymer, natural polymer. So we are polymers. Okay, so aside from that, so this is just for introduction, a briefly introduction. So, what we are going to talk in this course is, of course, the first part is introduction. So this introduction will go through all the um, the, the basic part, the naming part, because if you remember learning in chemistry or in other polymer course, you learn on many, many names, and you need to memorize them sometimes. But, but, honestly, I hate memorizations. I know you have also hate them, right? Or do you, do you, you want to memorize them? But it's, it's actually good for Good for you if you want to memorize but I'm not suggesting memorization. What I'm suggesting is understand what it is. Okay? That's, that's deep, a little bit deeper. So introduction, of course. The second part, and now back third, we, were, we are going to talk more on polymer synthesis. But we are not going to talk de really detailed in polymer synthesis. I will just want to sh uh, share some synthesis that are basic in polymer that is used in many, many industry, a polymer industry, what kind of synthesis. And then polymer structure, okay, polymer structure, what kind of structure we need to have? Because there are many, many kind of polymer. And because I, at, at the beginning, we, we, we say that, okay, polymers are everywhere. So that means the scope or the range for the polymers is really broad, wide range applications, right? From the polymers that you can stretch easily, and polymers also can be rigid, like if you see like a polish, so you shield, it's polymer. It's from the polycarbonate. 
the code for it, it, it can be rigid, it can be uh, really stretchy, like a, like a rubber, right? And then after the structure, we also get to know on uh, the polymer properties and the polymer characterization to know what kind of characterization we can have to check whether the property is what we want or not. Okay. So we, we, we can have the characterization. And what kind of parameter we want to characterize. Okay. Because we say that, okay, polymer can have stretchy line and it may be more like crystallized structure, something like that. Okay. How to differentiate that. Okay. And lastly, we're going to have some additional topics. Additional topics mean the topic is specified, which means the polymers, maybe if you think on the advanced polymers, maybe you could say it's related to semiconductor, or maybe related to bio, something technology, or maybe some advanced other topics. Okay, I haven't yet decided for the last one. Actually. For this one, we make, it's already established in the textbook, in the reference, we can have this discussion. But you can see what the lecture, what I'm trying to say here, is like a story. So polymer, we start by introducing the polymer. And then we need to know how we can create polymer. Right? And then what we what we are creating, we create structure of polymer, right? And how many structure we can have? And from the structure. Let's say we have different structure. It will affect the property. Is it strong? Is it weak? Is it stretchy? Is it not? The property will change. So synthesis, we decide what kind of structure we have, and we decide what properties we want to have. So this, this is all like a story. And then lastly, uh, there's the first one of last week. The third one we, we need to characterize. Is this, is this the polymer that we want? And then we can have more specified topics for either each industry or maybe either each advanced topics or maybe each uh, special uh, special topics. So that's our syllabus. Yeah, our syllabus. So hopefully within this uh, maybe 17, 18 weeks of lecture, we can cover all of this. And the midterm, probably around here, after this, after, I think after structure, or maybe before structure, or maybe after structure, so we have midterm here, and we have final here. Okay. Um, uh, midterm final. Okay. Now, let's look on the schedule. So, this is our class, right? And then this is the Thursday class. So I hope I can finish today's class until some up until certain parts of the uh, syllabus. And then continue to the Thursday, still introduction. Still introduction. And then uh, holiday, right? Holiday, long holiday. And then continue on. And I, 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 I will share later uh, the recording and I think the file also. And then we have another class here, right? And this is still also introduction, okay? so, but different part, a different part. So introduction, up to here, still introduction. Okay? So lot of introduction. And this is actually, we, we can go to polymerization this part, polymerization. The synthesis, the synthesis, and this. But I think if we can, we can learn faster. Maybe polymerization we can learn here. Okay. The polymerization and the polymer structure. Polymer structure, and then still polymer structure, and then we have the midterm here. Okay. I think. I made a mistake here. Should be the midterm to be here. The polymer property should be here. Because 
this is the two to hour path. So I think we have to interfere. I will, I will change this part. Okay. And polymer property, polymer property. And then we have our project here. We have two projects, or maybe later we can see whether enough one project or we need two projects. Okay. Depends on your score, actually. <laughs> we need more, so we can have more projects. And then polymer factorizations, a uh, special topic. And then uh, on June, this is the final, final exam. So, polymer factorization, special topic. And then final exam here. On Monday. Okay. Calendar. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is actually I would like to ask some questions, but it's not not really just want to add, uh, ask your opinion. Your opinion. So if you have time, go to. If you haven't yet. Log in. You can go to the menti.com using the this website and add the code two 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 four three one eight two. So yeah. So usually I'm I'm using this platform to to take your suggestion, feedback, any comments. Okay, let me just Yeah. I my mistake is I made it like a quiz so it's just like really I just I, I would like to ask, ask you what is your expectation on this course? And I made timer so you can write short comments and we can have more discussion on class. It should be not not a quiz. I I I I, I mistakenly uh, put the wrong section. Uh, read the 
articles online to to deepen your knowledge, to, to, to get to know more about polymers. Because I think you can find everything on, on the internet. Right? But if you can find that is suitable and easy for you to learn, do it. Just do it. Even me myself, sometimes maybe I also feel like maybe my my lecture is not uh, it's not sufficient. Maybe it's not suitable. Uh, maybe too short, or maybe need more explanation. You can have more explanation, and I also want to find additional explanations and then maybe give them to you, and so you can have more knowledge on that. Okay. Okay. Maybe any any specific expectations that you want to add aside from getting a good score, faster polls. I think based on the score system, if you attend the course uh, regularly and then do the project, it should be okay. Should be okay. But if you want to like having A plus then you need to get good in a meter and final. But if you fail the uh, attendance, you fail the project, and then you don't, you don't get, get the good score on the exam, that would be very difficult. I don't want to fail you. Okay, I don't want to fail. This is different from the fundamental course. This is your uh, second year course that is supposed to be a bit, a bit different. And this is introduction not the detailed information on the subject. Okay, so uh, let me continue a little bit. Okay, so about the project. Uh, the project is, there are uh, two ways that we, we, can, we can deal with this project. Uh, the first is I'm thinking on uh, assign a project that is related to so the tech the, the the procedure is you're going to submit your presentation so there will be the topics that you are going to choose or you can you can you can also propose your topic. I want to make a project about this part so, uh, of the, uh, the project uh, we can decide uh, later and we can also propose project by yourself about polymers but the detail of the project is uh, you, will, you will talk about some polymer well of course this polymer is not basic polymer not something that is people already use, widely use this is supposed to be something it's supposed to be, to be new, new polymer, or new modification, or new application. This, this can be done. So when when doing this project, if you are not familiar or if you are maybe confused and maybe having that, you're not sure whether okay, maybe this topic is okay, you can discuss with me. You can email me or you can discuss in class is this topic okay and of course i will ask what will be your content and you explain blah 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 if it's okay okay then that's your topic if not then maybe you need to take another topic or maybe your topic is too general so too many things to, to, to be spoken of so what you need to do is making a video Supposed to your presentation video. You can use many, many tools. You can record yourself, or you could record your voice, and then uh, while you explain in the presentation, I think some some software already have that function, like PowerPoint. You can record the presentation with, with your voice. And it's supposedly not too long. Okay. So duration 
5, 10, 5 to 10 is maximum. Shorter than that is really good. So you need to call. Uh, I think 10 is okay. 10 is okay. 10 is okay. So around, uh, around 8 to 10 slides, probably. But of course, the content should not be too general. So you need to be specific. Okay, that's that's the project. So the first project is that, the, the presentation video. So there will be a second project, okay, but this is tentative. If we need a second project, then we can have a second project. It's not a video, it's just an article. The second project is article. Maybe you have some questions. We, we can have more detailed explanation about the project uh, later. So it's around month of May. Or the month of May. Maybe any comments before we continue? Okay. Alright. Okay. Okay, I want to have a self-introduction again <laughs> from all of you, so that we can have, we can know more in the class because this is small class, okay? So not not really many, not not many students, <laughs> and this is like a practice, okay? Like a practice to speak in the front of uh, audience. Good for you to have a experience. Especially if you want to be more fluent when you speak and use English. Uh, yeah, good experience. Maybe I will start with colleagues in the United States. You can give them some examples. Anything you can say about yourself, okay? You can include your name and anything, actually, anything. Okay, anything. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my name is Alice. I'm from Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, I'm a second year student in IADP program, like international program. I think that, that's it. Uh, maybe you can share anything about maybe hobby or anything. Uh, okay. Uh, I love running and yeah. Um,
they are not in a good position. And this also happens to me. And I, I also think if, if, if we are a little kid, we are not afraid of making wrong. We just answer honestly what we like, what we don't like. And then we are not really expecting others to like ourselves, right? So because the kid just, they say just honestly. Oh, this is this is not good. Oh, oh, oh you did the job. You did great job. Blah, blah, blah. The kids just say anything. But I think I think we can learn from our experience as a kid. Because sometimes when we do that, maybe we can have more opportunity opportunity in the future. We can have more chances. Maybe from that point of view, we can be more creative, and in the future. If we are in a position that maybe we are going to a company, right? We want to have a job. And of course, when we do the interview, they will ask something, right? Blah, 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 blah. If we are not convinced them enough, then I, we, we can get the job, right? But we need to, to answer. Sometimes we need to answer the questions creatively, not really like the like we know everything, but we can answer in, in our point of view. And sometimes being a kid may be helping us to get that kind of answer. Ans answer with creativity. Okay. So I'm asking it. Who wants to be the second person? <laughs> anyone? 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 <laughs> anyone? Just just a regular, uh, regular, like maybe just name, maybe actually anything you want to say is okay. <laughs> you want to make it long or short? That's also fun. We, we still have many times. We still have time for this test. Thank you. 
playing basketball and and sleeping at least. Okay, okay. I'm from Taiwan. Okay, okay. Anyone to follow the two?
We are now 5.20. Uh, the class is supposed to be until 6.20. 6.30 or 20? 20, right? 6.20. But I think we can finish early. So let me just continue for a while. Okay. This is just a, a brief introduction. Okay. And I remember some of you, your name also. Just I want just to confirm which one is which I forget. I, 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 usually I mix up your name. Okay, so let's continue a little bit. Okay, I need to change my presentations. This is just uh, continuations. Let me just. Oh. Okay. So, in the introductions, okay, just for your brief. Uh, Brief intro. There will be a three, three segments. Okay. The origin, the origin of polymer, the basic definitions and nomenclature. This means how to define the polymers and how to name the polymer. Okay. The nomenclature means that, to name. And the third one is the molar mass and degree of polymerization. And why this is important? Because polymers will will have a strange property, strange physical property. So origins of polymer science and polymer industry. So we would like to start. So at least one segment, and then we can finish this this segment. So, one statement, polymers have existed in natural form since life began. Okay. This means all things that is biologically in our nature is basically they are polymers. Okay. They are uh, created from DNA, and protein, protein, peptides, and they are polymers itself. So, although they already exist, as a polymers, we still not sure their characterization, their property, and how to utilize uh, in, in industry. We are still not sure. So we are going to trace our history a little bit. It's just a really short history. And this is not something that you want to write all information about the polymers, but this is just a brief intro. So the polymer research or polymer uh, discovery, if we trace back in the history, is stated as early as 1820. Okay. This is when this man, Hancock, he discovered the rubber in nature. It will be more fluid when masticate, masticated is giving uh, some pressure, some stress. So, and you can think like, if something rubbery, you push for many, many, many times, sometimes it will be more fluid. It means that it's more stretchy okay, when you push, when you uh, apply some stress or some tension. And then, Charles Goodyear, if you know Goodyear, is the one who makes tires or uh, car, okay. or maybe, yeah, I think car. So in 1839, he found the property, okay. he found the elastic property of rubber. Okay. He found that the, the property can be improved, it can be uh, adjusted. Okay. And then in 1846, the cellulose nitrate 
it becomes more prominent. We are going to learn, uh, I think, later on, what is this fluid matrix. And then Nelson Goodyear, the brother of this Charles, so the brother, he patented the fluidization of natural rubber. It creates more um, hard uh, rubber. Okay? So he 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 made a, uh, a process. Okay? We call it the process fluidization. Well, I think this will be later on. Will be elaborated. Fluidization of natural rubber. And then, uh, in 1910, the the uh, Leo Bakelin, he found this. It's called Bakelite. It's kind of resin. If you know resin, it's like Bakelite, okay? and it produced commercially, and it's already fabricated uh, in industry. So it has a massive production. Why? Because it's World War. World War One. You will notice if you if you read the history, most of the industry development, they are significantly improved, increased, increased when war happens. When war happens, it happens in in America, right? In, when when you see the the civil war in America, it is something. Uh, it increasing their industry. Also, war war. It increasing the polymer okay, because they want to have the, the idea. They are in war, and in the modern world, like the war war, they are using gun, right? Rifle. Right. How to protect yourself? Oh, maybe we need to have something. Uh, really, really strong. Maybe metals. But metals, if you wear metals, it's really heavy. So they need to think what kind of materials that can can protect from bullets. And then they found from the textile, they can improve the strength, and they call the Kevlar. Right? It's also polymer. It's poly 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 aramide. So it increased during World War, especially for polymer. And Bakelite is important for processing the polymer. For processing the polymer, it's important. And then uh, other scientists, the Herman Stauziger, he gives new perspective on the definition of polymer. Okay? He gives the terms. The macro molecule, like who said big? You know, right? Who said something big before? What is, what is polymer? Right? Yeah. So macro molecule. So the so he gives assumption that the molecule in something uh, like a rubbery material, it should be consist of large molecule. He gives this statement. Because before, when uh, when we think on something that is stretchy, we are not going to think that it's large molecules. Because we see from our eyes how can it be, right? So eventually, from the perspective of science and the, uh, the structure itself, the molecules actually big. It's quite big. Okay, and then other important uh, inventors is the characters, Welles uh, characters. Okay. He studies the poly polyamides and polyesters, and he found invented the nylon. Okay. And still nowadays we are still using nylon. Okay. And then continue study the uh, the Nobel Prize winner Paul Flory. Right, uh, I think. The important one here is this part is just rubber and then alkaline to rubber. Okay. The important here is the bake line, the layer bake line, the macromolecule, the stalinger, and the characters. We found the polyamides and polyesters, and that's intended line. This is, this is 
the basic foundation on polymer history. But tragically, Carter's died and suicide. If you want to know more, you can look up why he did suicide. It's related to uh, the industry itself. That, uh, I think pushed him too hard and he didn't feel happy. So he, he tragically, uh, and even his suicide is using chemical, chemical reaction. So he, so in his, I think in his watch, he plays this cyanide, and then he he takes I think lemon because I think lemon and that and some other uh, substance will create a poison. So he drinks and then in hotel he tragically uh, this up. Even before his daughter born, he already that nevertheless he invented cyanide. Sad story, but yeah, that's okay. This is the person. Okay. So Bakeland, the Stoudinger, and the the Carters. So here, this is the polymer, the uh, stretchy materials. Okay, so uh, basic definitions. Okay, so I w I think I would like just to uh, explain until here, and I think we can. Uh, I think we can have a few slides more. So, as per definition, polymer is a substance composed of large molecules which have long sequences of one or more species of atoms or group of atoms and they are linked to each other by, by a, some primary bond. Usually we say, we say that this is a covalent bond. Covalent bonding. Okay. So what the keywords? Uh, the large, large. I forgot to bold this one. So it's supposed to be large molecules or macromolecules. It has long sequence. It means the sequence can be really, really, really long. Okay. Really, really, really long. And it has one or more group of atoms and they are linked the, the chain is linked by the covalent bonding usually that is what we call as a polymer okay okay and the macromolecules itself to to get to know into uh into, into its definition is they are formed by linking together each, each unit in the monomer. We call the each unit as monomer molecule through chemical reaction. This is what we call the polymerization. Okay. The chemical reaction is called the polymerization. Okay, and for the basic definitions and nomenclature, we are going to see some sections here. The first one, we are going to see the segment as the skeletal structure. So how to de uh, distinct the polymers. And then we have the homo polymers, co-polymers, classification of polymers. Homo polymers, it means the polymers, the unit inside, is the repetition is the same. We call them homopolymers. Okay. So basically, the common polymers that we usually see or use is what we call the homopolymers. If it is combination, okay, we call it copolymer. Co -polymer. And then the fourth one, we have another classification based on the structure, okay, based on the how we treat the polymer. We are going to see later on. Okay. okay, I think I think we can have one more slides here. Okay. So the skeletal structure means the polymer can be just one line, okay. really long line. We call the linear polymer. Okay. 
linear curve. Or we could have a cyclic. It's going to be like a like a going going around. It, it has no chain ends. And of course, if you think if you just if I just showing you this linear and cyclic, maybe you could you could uh, predict or maybe assume what kind of property that they will have or maybe will be a little bit different because when we make this structure although maybe inside the same structure maybe they will behave different so, so we give them different structure even though it's still similar maybe different results okay? and that's why many many scientists especially for, for polymer scientists or polymer chemists they are they want to have first is more easy synthesis the second one is more adjustable polymers because the, the, when they can adjust the polymers it means that they can adjust their property okay. and then we can have uh, the branch polymers okay. so it has a side change okay. it has a side change and how we characterize this branch is how many the branch is and how the size of the branch. For example, if this is the branch a little bit long or maybe short, 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 it, it can be different also. Okay. And this network here is supposedly, if you imagine if you take this and then see from each side, it's like a 3D, 3D network, it's like a 3D shape. So each each uh, chain they are connected. They are connected by a junction, and we call them how they connect is we call the the word or the uh, the term is cross link. Cross link. Okay. So cross link is how to cross the chain and link them together. Cross link. And they can be characterized through we call the degree of cross-linking, cross-linking. And of course, variation in this structure will give a major difference in property. So if you have branch that is maybe one that will be long like that, and maybe another branch is short, 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 they will have different different uh, properties. And if you think on what kind of brand in, in this size, we can let's like uh, let's say we can have many many uh, functional groups. For example, if you want to be more um, soluble to water, we can prepare something that is easily dissolved with water here. Okay. Like when we have um, like a soap, soap, soap for washing. Why they can wash the uh, the dishes, your, your your plate or your glass when you uh, wash using soap? How they can they can uh, attract the the oil, the oil, the oil part. So you need to prepare something, right? So if, if that is if that is a a, 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 a polymeric material, then you prepare something that is really uh, can attach the oil part. Okay. Okay, so uh, linear cycling branch network. Uh, what is after this? Okay. One more thing. I think uh, okay. other structure we call the dendrimer and hyper branch hole. Okay. Another structure that is I think nowadays it's already common. So dendrimer itself is highly branch polymers, but they are they are well defined. You see the symmetry. Okay? They are well defined. Where this hyper branch polymer, sometimes they are not really well defined. The structure is going everywhere, but they are having uh, it's kind of similar to dendrimer, but they are 
less defined than the thing. So we call this just a random hyperbranch point. Then we must more have a pattern. So when you have something that has pattern, it means that you can utilize maybe in the future. Because maybe this pattern can help maybe increase some property in other material as well. Okay, I think I will finish. Yeah, up until uh, yeah, up until here. Okay, up until this this structure. So up until here. Okay, we are going to continue on homopolymers and then other part as well on uh, Thursday morning. Okay, so that will be conclusion for our class today. So we have early class today. Uh, do you have any questions? Not yet? Any comments, feedbacks, anything? Do you have anything to say, like maybe if you have a like, specific subject like to discuss, you can come to me and we can discuss. Okay. So I think that's it. And yeah, see you on the Thursday morning. It's an early morning class. I hope you, you can go to class in the morning <laughs> because I know there will be some problem for some of you <laughs> for morning class. Okay. All right. So that's it. And I think, yeah, I will stop the recording.